welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to explain what's meant by a device, a disk, a drive, a partition and a volume. Distinguishing between these can get confusing, not least due to the way the terms are presented in many modern operating systems. For example, in Windows, in this PC, in the File Explorer, C colon is labelled as a local disk, even though it's listed under the heading Devices and Drives. Meanwhile, in Linux Mint, as in many other Linux distros, in the Disks utility, if we select a partition and then open the menu and select Format Partition, the resultant window is headed Format Volume. Most of the time, providing that everything works, exactly why things are presented as they are doesn't really matter. But this channel is called Explaining Computers, and so I thought we'd have a video to make everything absolutely clear. In computing, a device refers to any piece of hardware that performs a specific function. And here in Windows, if we right-click this PC and select Manage, we open up Computer Management, inside which we find the Device Manager. And this can be used to manage all of the input, output and other pieces of hardware on the system. In this context, a storage device is a piece of hardware that's used to store data. However, as we can see here in the Device Manager, storage devices are listed as disk drives. And if we open up disk drives like that and select the SSD connected to this system, we can see that it's listed with a device type of disk drives. Further down in Computer Management, over here under Storage, we also have Disk Management, where again the SSD on this system is listed as disk zero. This raises the very reasonable question of what we mean by a disk, as in modern computing the term clearly does not always refer to a circular object that spins. Rather, in the context of computer storage, the term disk now most accurately refers to the physical storage media used to hold data. This gets us to the definition of a drive, which is a mechanism for writing data to and reading data from a disk. So, for example, if we open up this very old hard disk drive, or HDD, we can find that inside it is indeed a mechanism for writing data to and reading data from this disk, or what is more technically known as a platter. Meanwhile, this solid state drive, or SSD, is another type of drive where the medium used to hold data, and what both Windows and Linux still refer to as a disk, are the memory chips below this label. Putting all of this together, we have three simple definitions of a storage device, a disk and a drive. And fear not how we got to a point where a disk does not always refer to a media that spins is something we'll return to later in the video. Next, let's turn to the somewhat trickier subject of partitions and volumes. Here, a partition is a logical division of a disk with a defined size. Most types of disk can contain one or more partitions with information about the number that exist and their sizes stored in a map called a partition table. Two different schemes, MBR and GPT, can be used to create partitions. MBR stands for Master Boot Record, supports up to four partitions per disk, and is compatible with disks up to two terabytes in size. Meanwhile, GPT stands for the GUID Partition Table and supports at least 128 partitions per disk, as well as disks with a capacity of at least 9.44 zettabytes. And a zettabyte is 1 billion terabytes. Before they can be used to store data, all hard drives and SSDs must have at least one partition. This can be created using many different applications, including the disks utility available in many Linux distros, or the disk management tool in Windows. 
and I'll demonstrate creating a partition later in the video. However, simply creating a partition is insufficient to make the storage space on a hard drive or SSD available for use. In addition, partitions must also be formatted with a file system in order to create a volume. Indeed, we can define a volume as a logical storage area formatted with a file system that can be mounted for user access. Note that the use of the word logical in these definitions indicates how a partition and a volume are defined and managed in software by an operating system rather than being physical hardware like a device, disk or drive. Our definition of a volume also refers to a file system. And here, a file system is the method used to organize and store data on volume. Most commonly, volumes are created by formatting a single partition with a file system such as NTFS, XFAT, FAT32, or X4. And if you want to learn more about different file systems, I've got a dedicated video. But back with this video, it's important to note that not all volumes are created by formatting a single partition. So, to be absolutely clear, whilst a formatted partition is a volume, not all volumes are a formatted partition. And indeed, volumes may be created in at least three other ways. For a start, it's possible to create a volume from multiple partitions. This can occur in some software RAID configurations where the partitions on multiple disks may be formatted into a single volume. The other way around, some volumes are not partition-based. For example, the storage space on a floppy disk like this one is normally directly formatted to create a volume without first creating a partition. Similarly, CDs, DVDs and other Optical media do not have partitions in the traditional sense, and so have a disk space directly formatted into a volume during the burning process. Finally, it's worth noting that a volume storage area may be a single file stored on another volume. For example, here in a folder on this Windows computer, we have an ISO file. And, like all ISO files, this contains a copy or image of what were historically the contents of a CD or other optical drive. And, if we right-click and select Mount, Windows opens the ISO file up with an allocated drive letter. And so, we now have a user-accessible storage area, or volume, that's not based on a formatted disk or partition thereof. In a similar fashion, a security utility like Veracrypt can create a password-protected file called an encrypted container, and then mount it as a volume. To demonstrate, in this folder we have such a file. And in the Veracrypt application, with the file selected, we can click on Mount, enter the password to gain access, and the encrypted container file is mounted as a volume. As yet another example, when virtual machines are created using software such as VirtualBox, their storage volumes are based on single files stored in another volume. And so, for example, VirtualBox virtual machines like this one have a storage volume based on a VDI or virtual disk image file. To summarize, a volume may be based on several different kinds of physical or logical storage including a single partition on a hard drive, SSD, flash drive, or memory card, multiple partitions in a software RAID configuration, the storage space available on a floppy or optical disk, or a single file stored in another volume, such as an ISO image, an encrypted container, or a virtual hard disk file. Hopefully, this is clear although I accept that things may now be more complicated than when we first started. However, we do at least now have simple definitions for a storage device, a disk, a drive, a partition, and a volume. So, with these concepts individually distinguished, it's time to explore their historical context.
Back in the 1960s and 70s, most hard drives had removable discs that were mounted in packs or cartridges. In the 1970s and 80s, early CPM and DOS microcomputers then primarily used floppy drives which similarly had removable discs. For several decades, the distinction between a drive mechanism and the disks on which data was stored was therefore extremely clear. Reflecting this, the DOS operating system allocated two letters, A and B, to its first two floppy drive mechanisms. The letters C and onwards were then assigned to hard drives, which by this time contained a non-removable disk. However, as we've noted, whilst floppy disks were not partitioned, hard drives were, and could contain more than one partition. A physical storage device therefore now had the potential to host more than one volume, and so to be allocated more than one drive letter. This is where things got messy, as whilst A colon and B colon each referred to a drive mechanism that stored data on a single disk, C colon referred to the first volume, the first formatted partition, on a mechanism with non-removable storage. And so, drive letters were simultaneously used to refer to both physical storage hardware and logical storage constructs. Things got worse when Windows and other graphical operating systems began using physical hardware icons in their file managers. For example, here in Windows 3.1, drive mechanism icons for A and B are displayed even if no disk is present. As we can see if we click on A, and wait a second, we will get a message. Here it is, which makes it absolutely clear that A refers to a drive mechanism and not to a disk. However, the hardware icon we have here for C most definitely represents a volume as if a disk in the system's first hard drive were partitioned and formatted into two volumes, then it would appear as both C and D. And just to add to the linguistic mess, we have here a disk menu for managing the media contained in the drives we can select. These conventions became so ingrained that when SSDs arrived, no attempt was made to refer to their internal storage media as anything other than a disk. And so, today, from your operating system's point of view, the flash memory chips in an SSD are a disk, mounted in a drive and accessed in Windows via a drive letter, which almost always refers to a volume. And we just have to accept this bizarre reality. Oh, and if you want to delve deeper into this topic, do not trust generative AI as it's been trained on conflicting data and often gets seriously confused. Greetings! I said I'd demonstrate how to partition a drive and to do this I put this SSD into this USB caddy which is plugged into a computer and this SSD is in factory state, or in other words, it's in exactly the same state it would be in if it had been newly purchased. And if you want to return an existing SSD to factory state, you can use a Windows utility called Dispart, which I've covered in, guess what, another video. Anyway, here on the Windows desktop, our new drive does not appear in this PC because it's not been set up. And so let's go over to this PC and right click and select Manage which as previously gets us to computer management and specifically down here to disk management, which immediately recognizes we have a drive containing a disk which needs to be initialized. And it's offering us the choice of using either the MBR or GPT partition style. And normally these days it's best to stick with the newer GPT, which is what I'll do here, I'll press OK. And if we just give ourselves a little bit more space, we can see down here we have got now disk one, this is our new disk, which has got lots of unallocated space. But if we right click, we can do new simple volume like that. Welcome to the new simple volume wizard. I'll click on next. And what this is going to allow us to do is to create a partition and format it to become a volume. And I say a partition, we could create multiple partitions, but we'll just create one. We'll use all the space for the single partition and click on next. And we're going to click next again to allocate a drive letter, which will be drive D. 
We now arrive in a screen in the new simple volume wizard for formatting partition. We are back to how strangely, so we say, Windows uses these terms. We have created here a partition. We're going to format a partition, which will then be a volume. But ignoring the words Windows is using, we will simply enter a volume label. Let's call it Stanley. We will stick with click format, which is fine for an SSD, and click on next. Where everything is now completed, we will click on finish. Wait a second, and everything is applied, as we can see down here in computer management. And if we go back to this PC, lo and behold, we have now got our new volume called Stanley, whose storage area is the single partition we just created on our SSD. So there we are. Hopefully the distinction between a device, a disk, a drive, partition, and a volume is as clear as it possibly can be. And as a result, we can all get a better night's sleep. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon. Oh.